No, I don't waste no time What's going on guys and welcome back to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel my name is Joshua Daniel George, a social media marketer and online coach. And in this video, I want to be going over Facebook's objectives. Which one should you choose at which point and why? Now, before we actually get into this video, I'm actually trying something out where I basically create an audience uh, on Google Ads from those of you that have subscribed to my channel. And those that subscribe will basically see my advertisements um, basically, you know, offering a social media marketing course for free. So if you want to have that social media marketing course completely free of charge, then what you need to do is subscribe to the channel and also click on that notification bell. Um, also, so you get a notification every time I upload. But like I said, I've created a custom audience within Google Ads for those that have subscribed. So you guys get to see my, uh, basically my free social media marketing beginner course. And with that said, I'm now going to explain the objectives of Facebook and when you should use them. So as you can see, the objectives have been divided into three categories, awareness, consideration, and conversion. Now in terms of the awareness objectives, there's two. You've got reach, which is pretty self-explanatory, but basically that will show your advertisement to as many people as possible. So it won't necessarily choose the, you know, the people that are most likely to convert, or it won't try and get as much traffic onto your website. It will literally just show your ad to as many people as possible. So let's say you have a audience of 10 million that you want to reach. Facebook will try its best to show your advertisements to all of those 10 million people. Okay, then we've got the second awareness objective, which is uh, brand awareness. And what that will do is not necessarily show your advertisement to as many people as possible, but show your advertisement to people that are most likely to register what it says. So people that are most likely to stop scrolling and actually consume your advertisement, they, you know, they will see your brand awareness campaign. So for example, let's say you are targeting a warm audience with uh, something that generates social proof. Maybe you've been uh, published in an article, maybe you've paid for, um, you know, basically if paid for a, a press article, anything like that, and you want to show that to your current audience, then brand awareness can be a very good way of doing that. Then moving on to the consideration uh, objectives, the first one is traffic. And what this will do is get you as many people as possible from Facebook onto where you lead them to. So if you want, uh, let's say you've created a blog post or an article on Medium and you want to drive as much traffic to that to get people to read it, then the traffic objection is definitely your best friend. Not to be confused with the conversion objective. So if you want that person, when they're on the website, to purchase something or leave their information, etc., then I wouldn't necessarily go for the traffic uh, objective. So basically what the traffic objective will do is look at the audience you're trying to target and then see who is most likely to click through to the website, but that does not necessarily mean that they are most likely to, like I said, become a lead or um, you know purchase something on the website, okay? So moving on, engagements, and engagements can actually be divided into three subcategories, as you can see here. We've got post engagement, page likes, and event responses. So engagement will literally get you, you know, more likes, uh, comments, shares, and followers, etc. And as you can see, we've got post engagement, which is actually I've been using this quite a lot recently. What this will do is it will get you a lot of uh, comments and shares and likes on your post, which is great for social proof. So let's say, for example, you want to run an advertisement to a cold audience. What you can do is show um, the post to the warm audience first, run a small engagement campaign to that, get a lot of likes, shares, followers, comments, etc., and then use that same advertisement or same post to cold audience and they will immediately see, okay, well, this guy must be the real deal because he's got a lot of uh, likes and comments, etc., which are all, you know, more often than not are positive if you show them to a warm audience. So post engagement is quite a neat little trick um, if you're running uh, traffic or if you're running advertisements to cold ads and you don't want um, to basically show an empty post, you know, you want some kind of social proof on there. Uh, page likes, 
not as effective as it once was. I mainly use this for social proof. So back in the day, page likes was a great way of getting more, uh, listening you know, more likes on your Facebook page. And the great thing about that was if you post on your Facebook page, um, literally all the, your entire audience will see it provided that they log into Facebook. Nowadays, the engagement organic is uh, absolutely dreadful. I think organic engagement is less than 5% at the moment. So um, in terms of page likes, it's not worth it to you know basically get customers out of it but if you let's say for example you've got a new facebook page and you just want a bit of social proof you just want it to look like it's a legit um, established page or business then a, a quick page like campaign in for example third world countries where the cost per click and the cpms are very very cheap um, it could be a great way of basically like i said getting that social proof Event responses is great for if you've got um, you know certain events, festivals, etc., um, and you want to know if people are going, not going, or might be going. You know those three options that you get when you see an event. Like I said, if you've got some kind of event coming up, or your client has an event coming up, um, or you're going to an event and you want to, I don't know, you for some reason you want to see who else is going, then you can run an event responses campaign uh, to see who is going and who isn't. App installs is the next one, which is uh, pretty straightforward. You know, it lists you just if you've got an app and you want more app installs, then just choose this objective. If, um, like I said, you know, people have tried conversion campaigns to landing pages where you can install the app. If you have an app and you want app installs, just choose the app install campaign, guys. Don't don't make it more difficult than it already is. Okay, video views again, self-explanatory. If you have a video and you want people to watch it, then choose the video views campaign. And this is great if you have the video on Facebook, um, you know, because you can literally retarget people that, for example, have watched 50%, 75%, or even 90% of your video. So it's a great way of seeing, let's say your video is 10 minutes long and people watch 50% of it, then you know, those people have watched at least five minutes of your video and those are more likely to um, you know be warm and consider whatever it is you're offering as opposed to someone who has just seen your video uh, but swiped away or keep kept on scrolling lead generation is great for service-based businesses uh, it literally you know what you can do is you can create a lead form within Facebook and the great thing about this is is that it automatically fills out all of the details so it's very low barrier to entry for the, the person that becomes a lead um, so literally if they click on your lead form then um, basically all the information apart from like the custom questions will already be filled out the only downside to that is because it's such you know such a low barrier to entry the quality of the lead might not be as high because like i said it's already auto populated they don't need to put any effort in to become a lead as opposed to if they actually go onto your website they see what you're all about they see what it is you have to offer and they you know manually fill out their details people that do that are much more likely to become a high quality lead as opposed to the facebook lead generation ads but if you have a service-based business or if your client has a service-based business then i'll definitely check out that lead generation campaign because like i said it's a great starting point for lead generation ads messages is a tool that i don't really use that often but i do know a lot of people that do and it will literally get you messages via facebook messenger so let's say for example you've got an online coaching business and you offer a mini consultation via messenger prior to pitching them the service then uh, messages is a great way to do that or what you can do if you have an info product that is relatively expensive you can let people ask you questions via a messenger campaign ask them questions and then what you can do is say to them listen um and you know you've got a lot of questions there i definitely think that there's you know there's something here that we may be able to work together on um let's hop on an actual call and then what you can do is you can say to them listen if this sounds like we are a right fit i will offer you a spot in our program just a heads up is that okay with you and that way you can try and figure out if this person is actually willing to put money down to work with you alongside you again depending on what type of business you have then moving on to the conversion section of the marketing objectives conversion is probably my most used objective um, nowadays and what it will do is it will literally like facebook will literally try and find people that are most likely to convert for the objective that you are optimizing for. So let's say your conversion campaign is set up and optimized for add to cart. 
then Facebook will look at your audience and basically pick out like 10% of that audience that is most likely to add to cart. So in terms of the CPM, the CPC, etc., they might be a little bit higher than, for example, a traffic campaign, but the conversion will be cheaper. So if we, for example, um, you know, have a traffic campaign and a conversion campaign both go into the same website, then you'll notice that the traffic campaign will get you cheaper clicks, it'll get you a cheaper CPM, but overall the conversion will be cheaper with the conversion campaign. So if we get one purchase with a traffic campaign and one page with a conversion campaign, then we'll notice that the more often than not, the conversion campaign will have a cheaper cost per purchase, okay? Catalog sales is a amazing tool for bottom of funnel ads. So if you have a web shop or an e-com store or your client has, and you want to retarget people that have that indicator of interest, so they view the content, they've added the cart, they've initiated checkout, they've added to wish list and so on and so forth, you can then run a retargeting campaign with dynamic catalog ads um, and they will show the exact product or item that they have seen on Facebook so we all you know, we've all fell for this before in the past where we've selected an item on a web shop let's say we've clicked on a pair of sneakers we've added them to cart we've left the web store we've gone onto Facebook and we see that exact item on Facebook you know as if by magic as if the the FBI is listening on us well that is done with a catalog sale campaign then store traffic is great if you have a physical offline store, um, especially if you've got like multiple little chains, um, then this is a great one to do because you can literally target the exact people that are in the neighborhood of that exact store. Okay, so it's great for if you have an offline store. I think the if you look on the little eye here, it says drive visits to your physical store by showing ads to people who are nearby. So a very effective tool if you have, for example, a restaurant or anything along those lines. Okay, so that is all I've got for today. Hope you enjoyed enjoyed this video hope this give you uh, hope this gave you a bit more of an insight into the objectives like i said this is a frequently asked question for me if you want to know more about this or if you want to be part of a lifestyle design community where we basically discuss things like this on a regular basis i have a free Facebook group, which I will link in the description box down below. Uh, like I said, you know, you will surround yourself with like-minded people, people that want to start their own social media agency and offer Facebook ads as a service. Everything you need to get started, including a free social media marketing beginner course where we focus on the Upwork outreach method is in that free Facebook group. Now, if you are serious about starting your agency and you actually want to work together with me, I also have my own coaching program where I do exactly that. So I will take you on as a personal client and basically help you build your agency from the inside out. Again, everything will be linked in the description box down below for that. But for now, subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you guys in the next video.